Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It's great to have you with us on this Tuesday. That's right. It is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Brittany Pacheco is going to know all about that. And uh, oh, by the way, we've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour. Brittany, I know it's a special day for you. Yeah. Happy May the 4th to everyone. In case you are not familiar with it, Star Wars, just saying. It's a good day to start the so uh, Star Wars saga, but um, I'm a little indifferent on some of the prequels and the last three movies. Anyway, I'm just going to have to let all that go. It's all good. I have a feeling everyone's just going to forget the last three movies and we'll just move <laughs> on when they come out with a new one. Especially the last one, man. That Rise of Skywalker was rough. Last but, uh, one, okay. Middle one, dumpster fire. I'm gonna, just going <laughs> to, I turn my back on the middle one as a fanboy of Luke Skywalker. They lost me in the middle of that saga. I will say, for those who haven't checked out The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, a little bit of a slow burn, but the season finale of this last season, It wow. was great. Yeah, wow, wow. as well. Something they should have done in the middle episode. But that's just me. Let's go on, move on with that, Brittany. Anyway, enough about Star Wars. We're going to keep talking about Star Wars at some point. But before we get into today's show, I do want to ask everyone to go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for our audience to help grow our audience, we need your help to share this podcast. So click that share button at the bottom of this podcast. That way it pops up on your personal news feed. And Todd, let's get into today's show. All right. Thanks, Brittany. Stick around. We'll check in with you later. Uh, we've got a couple of guests on the show. We're going to shine a light on HCC's Coleman College for Health Sciences and Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month with our guest whose family immigrated here from Vietnam. We're talking about Elizabeth Ho. She is the program director of Diagnostic, Diagnostic Medical Sonography and for, with HCC's Coleman for Health, College for Health Sciences. Good morning, Elizabeth. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. We're looking forward to talking with you in a few moments. So stand by. We'll be with you very shortly. And we also have one of our favorite guests on the show. You've seen her before, Melba Martin. She's HCC's with HCC Public Live Services Librarian and also a member of the team that was the winner of the Eagle Award program. Good morning, Melba. We can get you to unmute your mic. There uh, we go. Morning. Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing? It's we're great. It's good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we want to ask you first off, congratulations again. But tell us about the uh, Eagle Award and what helped you pick up that award. Well, it was a, a collaboration of the students, the faculty, and staff at Houston Community College. I call them the HCC team, and I think we. Uh, talked about this, how was I going to stay in touch with the students? Yeah. But not only were the students at home working from their laptop, I actually was at home uh, as I couldn't go on campus because of some medical reasons. So it worked just fine. And I just communicated th with them through emails. I reached out to the faculty and staff. I selected five families from the after school program. This was in partnership with the Eight Leaf YMCA, and it was a very, very successful program. So when I saw that Dominique had asked for, do you think you might have had the program of the year? So I just said, well, let me submit the Angel Tree Project. And I submitted it, and I was elated to see that we had, had been honored to win that award because I'm sure there was many more that was deserving of it also. Well, you know, you guys, we've heard so much over the last 13 or 14 months since this lockdown started, not just with our students at HCC, but really students across this country. There's something called a digital divide. It's a reality. And a lot of students, both college students and high school, middle school, younger, they're all, a lot of them are facing this. And you guys are reaching out to help bridge that digital divide with a, a program like Technology to Go and laptops in hotspots for students. That's correct. Uh, we now have available for the students uh, laptops and Wi-Fi's. They can just go online just like they usually do and put a request in, call us, and then we tell them the date in which they can come and pick it up. 
they have the opportunity to keep the laptop and the Wi-Fi until the enrollment ends. If it's all the way to the end of next year, then they don't have to bring it back. They can continue to use it because it wouldn't make sense to give someone something that in six weeks later you want it back. So we right. want to make sure that it has a great impact upon them. And after we check all of these out, hopefully that will encourage the college to give us more. And this was in support with the IT. That's Farrell Prestige and her group. If there's any problems that the students might have, all they have to do is call that number. And those flyers are going to be going out everywhere. The right. first ones, 3,000 of the information went out to the students on financial aid. So they would be the, we figured they were the ones that was impacted the most. But as you know, and, and had, as this situation proved, everyone is in need of help, especially when it comes to the internet. And yeah, yeah. That, that, that hot spot is just great. Yeah, I mean, you can have the best computer around, but unless you are, uh, uh, unless you have internet connection, it's not going to help you log on and do your schoolwork. And a lot of our students may be working off their cell phones. Some have limited data plans on those cell phones. And the hotspots are like pocket-sized devices they can take home and safely do their, their work uh, by logging on to the internet. That's correct. And they can also take them wherever they want to go. They'll go all the way internationally and work with those uh, hotspots. Yeah. So it's a great, great tool for them. Uh, tell us about the webinars and the HCC librarian-led instructional classes that you guys have. Right. Uh, the librarians put on, like, I just finished doing three of them. It was called Finding and Using Occupational Outlook Handbook. I decided to put emphasis on careers. So I gave three days. I recorded the situation, the program that I did. And there are students, believe it or not, who do not have the time to watch the real webinar as it's actually happening. Yeah. So we record them and drop them into Edutube. And just per chance, I was doing Ask a Librarian, the chat hotline, and a professor called in and she said, my students cannot watch the ones that are available during the day. How can I get a recorded one? I said, that's a very good question. And as technology would have it, we was cut off. But I tracked her down through uh, the learning web, got her number, called her on the phone, and walked her through it step by step how to provide that information to the students so when they came home at night, they could watch the recording of those series. That's the best part about it, because like you said, not everybody has a chance to watch the live program. We get that here at Up to the Minute, you know, where a lot of folks prefer to watch the recording later in the day. And that's nothing wrong with that, because uh, at your convenience. Tell us about Flipster. You're into that. Yes. Uh, thanks to Angela Seacrest and her futuristic knowledge, she decided that she would add Flipster. Flipster is a digitized library magazine system where at your leisure, you can read something in fashion, you can read Glamour magazine or whatever. You can download an app to your mobile device. You can look, read it from your actual computer. But if you don't know, there's a category on the left-hand side. And if you want something on social justice, you can just click that on and those particular magazines will pop up. If you're doing something in science, you can do the same thing. So it's a great tool for and it's free digital yeah. magazines that's like if you had newsweek yeah, or yeah. one of those in your hand you can actually look at it and read it page by page on your mobile device or on your laptop tell us about your next partnership project coming up it's called uh it's with the ymca and something called be the change right it's uh, what we're doing is my what I'm doing in particular because I have a you have the opportunity to select where you want your money to go. So be the change is bringing in people from the community, partner like with HCC, maybe you or whatever, and I'll send you this letter and I ask you to please because we have so far it's just May. We've already had eleven children 
under the age of 12 to drown here in Houston. So I put my money and I want people to help me be a part of the change in making sure that these children can be attending the swim camp that we have at the Y and make sure that they have the ability to not see people, children will just jump into the water because they don't want to tell their friends they can't swim. Yeah. So that's the reason why we have such a high drowning rate. So that's what the be the change is about and be impactful. So you just, I'm going to go back out and the link that I sent you and send it back to the people that I was asking and they just hit that link and you just donate. And if we have a partnership with a company that you work with prior, if you donate 500, they in turn will donate 500 in your behalf. So that's what Be The Change is all, campaign is all about. Incredible things you have going on, Melba. Congratulations on the award for the, your team. Uh, H, Melba Martin is an HCC Public Services Librarian. Good luck with all your endeavors. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you all for having me. And y'all have a pleasant day. You too. It's always great to see you. All right. We're going to move on to Elizabeth Ho. She's the director of sonography program at HCC Coleman College for Health Sciences. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. Let's talk about the program itself first. Tell us a little bit about the diagnostic medical sonography program. It's great. I mean, last year we, um, you know, COVID hit us. And so we had to, some of our students weren't able to graduate on time. Yeah. But thank God we gave them an extension and they were able to graduate. So now we're basically on track. Uh, we're very grateful that our, all our students are tech savvy. And so they jump on this virtual world and virtual education really well. And they all adapt to, um, you know, the education that we're offering them. Tell us the difference. What you know when you hear sonography, I never can figure out what's the difference between ultrasound and sonography. What's the difference between the two? Ultrasound is just a general term that means uh, ultra is high and sound is sound, so it's high frequency wave. Um, ultrasound is really just a general term that says that we use ultrasound uh, as means sounds wave. But really, what we're doing is creating diagnostic imaging. We're using ultrasound to penetrate through the patient's body, and as the beam penetrate through the body, it reflects back the information that the computer can use to create diagnostic images for the radiologist to read. And so it's actually diagnostic ultras, um, uh, diagnostic medical sonography. The word sonography is using sound wave to create images, basically. Okay. And your students, they are, they, they graduate as text. Um, what's their title? How long are the program? Sonographers. Sonographers. Mm -hmm. sonographers. Okay. What is their, what, so their title is sonographers. Um, where would they wind up working in hospital settings and doctor's offices? And what's usually the starting pay when you get out there? Um, actually, our, our role, because our machine is not tied down to a facility, therefore we can work at, you know, different locations and the machine is mobile, so we can yeah. actually move the machines around too. So our students, typically they work at the Texas Medical Center and hospital base, um, but they do could also work at clinical settings. Uh, we had, I had some graduates that started their own career and created you know, being entrepreneurship and then have yep. their own career working in sonography. But, um, you know, like any career, when you start out, you're looking about 27 to $30 an hour. Yeah. And with the healthcare field, I mean, that's just a starting salary and you can um, work in different ships and make more money, take yeah. call and make more, more money. So it's just a stepping stone basically for our students when they finish our program. So you're not really at a traditional setting where you're tied down and you go to the office day by day. It sounds like you're able to get out and go anywhere. I know I'm somewhat familiar with the, the traveling uh, ultrasound techs or sonographers because um, when I had a pet who was sick, they had me come in on a certain day when the person would be there to do that. And I guess their, their job was they traveled around the vet, different veterinarians' offices and were able to perform these services. So you get a chance really to, to get out there and do more than just going to the same place every day. Yes. So that's one of my uh, students who is an entrepreneurship. She create, she, she's a, her own contractor. 
So, or she creates a mobile company where she just, uh, you know, go to different hospital whenever they yeah. call her, she would just go in. So it's very versatile. It's not just to work in the hospital and, uh, you know, and, and do the same thing over and over again. Um, there's many branches also with ultrasound. You can be specialized in certain organ areas. Right. And um, of course, the more certifications you earn, the more money you could make. And for example, there's abdomen, OBGYN, pediatric, yeah. cardiac. So, I mean, like I say, it's going through our program, it's just a stepping stone for our students because after they finish our program, there's so many things they can do. They can branch into different career paths or specialties that they can um, specialize in. They can work in multiple areas. And if they want to, they can go into cell app specialist educations like me. Yeah. So there's a lot of different avenues for our students. You know, a lot of our students uh, may in the past have been attracted to some of these ads for the profit universities or colleges that get them trained. They say, we'll get you trained fast but then they wind up it's tens of thousands of dollars for that fast training, but they give them great financing that you pay it out over the next 10 years. You guys, you're, you're under HCC, so you're affordable. And then how long is the program? Because you guys can do the same thing for a lot less money and get better training at Coleman College. Yes, our program is 16 months, not including the prerequisites, which are like the four right. academic classes, including math, English, physics, and AMP. But um, our program currently is under the uh, Technical Events Certificate Program, which means students must have earned uh, an advanced technical, I mean, I'm sorry, an associate degree in online health or a bachelor degree before they come in. But uh, I just finished up uh, proposing for an associate degree program, and we have already, um, the uh, Texas Coordinating Board has already approved of that. Now we're just waiting on SAC. So once SAC approves it, then we can actually yep. offer an associate degree program for our students, which means that students coming out from high school can join us and um, can join our program and finish our program within 16 months after they you know, um, are done with their prerequisites and everything. Then after 16 months, they can start and, and you know, earn their registry uh, and work as a sonographer and, uh, you know, be like all other son sonographer out there. Elizabeth, you know, we're uh, celebrating AAPI month this month. And for those of you who don't know, that's uh, Asian American Pacific Island Heritage Month. And uh, maybe you can tell us about a bit about your family coming here to the States. <laughs> Well, we, uh, we were refugees. Uh, we came to the U.S. Uh, in 1984, I believe. And so at that time, I was seven. And honestly, it's a, a blur for me. Um, I just thought we we're just going on a trip, be on a boat. It felt like forever to be on that boat. But when I talked to my mom, she said we were stuck on a boat for about a week until we were rescued by an islander. And um, they rescue us, um, you know, um, and supported us and, you know, uh, for a year or so before we got accepted into the U.S. And when I came to the U.S., it was eye-opening. It was amazing. But again, it was kind of a blur because I was so young. I would just follow my parents' lead. Um, but I'm very proud of them and very blessed that they did what they did um, to sacrifice themselves, um, neglect, you know, um, step away from their hometown and really come to the U.S. just so that we could have uh, better lives. And um, I'm just very proud of them and very happy that I'm here and, you know, taking advantage of the USA here. <laughs> yeah, well, we're glad to have you, uh, Elizabeth Ho. Thank you for joining us this morning. And, uh, you know, we'll certainly put the links to your program in the social media post for the show. Because, folks, if you see those commercials and you're attracted to them, take a look at HCC's Coleman College. We've got the same programs there better instruction, much more affordable price, and we'll get you through and get you that uh, degree certification or what you need to get out into the workforce. Elizabeth Ho is Director of Sonography Program at HCC's Coleman College. Thanks, Elizabeth. Take care. Thank you. All right. We are going to move on to Brittany Pacheco, who's celebrating uh, Star Wars Day, better known as May the 4th be with you, Brittany. Uh, Brittany, virtual Zen garden tour. That's happening. Are you going to take part in this? 
you know, it's probably something I should take part in because I have, you know, like many others here, need to find some peace, need to find a way to relax. Um, and I've got my finals coming up uh, this week. So this is um, really <laughs> Great yeah. timing for our students. So Student Life is celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month with a virtual Japanese Zen garden experience with waterfalls, bridges, stone paths, and cherry trees in this relaxing, peaceful place before finals. Like I said, y'all, finals are coming up. You need to take advantage of this. That's happening uh, today, actually, at 1 p.m. We're going to put the link in this post after the show. Yes, and speaking of fun, from Zen to Cinco de Mayo, folks, that's right, it's happening tomorrow, HCC style. We've got a number of things that uh, we'll be doing for you online. Uh, we'll post the link in our, we'll put the uh, link to those in the social media post for the show. Reggaeton, 5 p.m. today. Okay, is that right? Did I say that right? <laughs> that, right? that was a good attempt, Todd, but it's reggaeton. Regga reggaeton? Regga There's no H in there. You show me the H. Reggaeton. A oh, reggaeton. Okay, whatever. <laughs> reggaeton. Reggaeton. Okay, oh, that's Lord. happening uh, May the 4th. And okay, what's the, you can just take the rest of it over. Uh, so <laughs> from reggaeton today at 5 p.m., you're going to go to Bachata for tomorrow on Cinco de Mayo at 5 p.m. And then after that, you can play the game of my people, Mexican Bingo, also known as Loteria. So uh, we are going to post the, those links in this post after this show. So reggaeton, Todd. We'll, reggaeton. we'll work on it. Reggaeton. We'll work on it. All right. All right. I'll work on it. Okay. All right. Uh, African-American men and mental health. We've got uh, something uh, going on. A symposium, HCC's tutoring, counseling services, and student life are joining together to help de-stress techniques in improved finals and testing techniques with a special presentation focused on African-American men and mental health. That's happening today, right after the show, 11 a.m., Tuesday, May 4th. Checks the links in the social media post for the show. And tomorrow, Cinco de Mayo, we've got a lunch and learn happening. I hope they have tacos, just saying. Um, <laughs> so the lunch and learn is how to transition successfully. So as we re-enter the workplace, there are a lot of challenges we may experience. So this workshop offers tips for a smooth transition. Now that's happening tomorrow, Wednesday, May 5th, 11.30 a.m., hosted by uh, Lacey Wolf of the Employment Retirement System of Texas, ERS. So uh, registration is required. Be sure to check, check your HCCS emails for information on this Lunch and Learn. Okay, all right, another thing happening. Guess what? The day after Cinco de Mayo, we've got a big event happening. So don't have too many margaritas on Cinco de Mayo because the next day, a fashion fusion, that's right, it's back, it's online, it's better than ever. It is happening 7 p.m. Thursday, May the 6th. Uh, HCC and the Museum of Fine Arts, Houston's fashion fusion with designs inspired by four categories, antiquities, renaissance, baroque, and modernism. Yeah, that you're impressed, aren't you, Brittany? Anyway, I was, um, a little impressed by Baroque, yes. <laughs> yes. So you can watch it on our district Facebook page. You can watch it on the Museum of Fine Arts Houston Facebook page. You can also get more information by going to MFAH, Museum of Fine Arts Houston, dot org. We'll have the link in that post, but it's 7 p.m. Thursday. We've had a couple of our team members from HCC TV working on this very hard. They're going to put on a great show for you. So, all right. Uh, very serious subject, food insecurity. We're looking at battling that, Brittany. Yes. Yeah, so free groceries is something that we've been talking about here on the show for a while, and that will continue. So registration for Houston Food Bank's Community Health Market Trailers, formerly known as the Eagle Mobile Food Market, it will be at multiple HCC campuses. So all HCC community members can sign up to receive free groceries. Simply just pick the campus, date, and time you would like to pick up your food. You can email for more information, hcc.cares at hccs.edu. Okay, uh, let's get into um, our registration. It's going on right now for no, not just the summer, but also fall. Fall registration is underway, and you can register at hccs.edu slash now. When you go there, look at our five ways that you can learn. We have some online models where you can just strictly go online, either live, 
with your instructor or just take it at your convenience uh, when you have time to do it. So look at those. Also some hybrid courses, which is online and some in person. And we're gonna get students back on our campuses this summer and in the fall for face-to-face -face classes. If you wanna sign up for those classes, sign up now because they're gonna fill up class, they're gonna fill up fast. They're very small uh, following CDC guidelines. Uh, it may change, but right now very small classes. And if you want the right class with the right instructor at the right time, you're going to need to sign up early. So go to hccs.edu slash now. Of course, you can also learn about payment options. You can learn about financial aid and scholarships, grants. A lot of our programs, Brittany, it's amazing now. We've got a lot of programs where you can sign up, take the courses within like six months, get a certification, and everything's paid for for the grants. Yeah, that's a great opportunity, Todd, for our students to, you know, if, if someone unfortunately lost their job due to COVID, but they want to come back and maybe do something different and, you know, need a quick turnaround time. This is a very, very great opportunity, again, for students who are just looking to get in and out and get that certification and get their foot into a career. So, I mean, take advantage of that, folks. Take it's, advantage it's a great of opportunity. It. Yeah, take advantage of it. So, Brittany, um, you know, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here, and you can probably relate to this because I'm 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 mean, I'm a little ticked off this morning. So oh. I'll tell you oh. what. Well, we're going to end the show like this. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to end the show like this. First off, you know, um, as you you may know, over the weekend we lost um, our our beloved Peter Frampton, our poodle. Um, so um, he was uh, he he's in a better place now, but we've been um, you know kind of looking for a new rescue. We really want to rescue a new dog. Well, because of the pandemic, folks, a lot of the rescues, if you're looking for a particular dog, they have low inventory, if you want to count it that way, and they just don't respond to you. You send them emails, you send them a phone call, you leave a phone call, you leave a message, you go on a website, you find a dog. By the time you find the dog, it's out of date. Guess what? They haven't updated it for weeks. So um, yeah, we're running into a few of those problems, but you know, it's uh, it's been a trying time over the past few days, but yeah, it's it's strange. It's weird because usually you just go walk into a shelter, look at the pups there, pick one out, and go home. Nowadays, you got to make an appointment. Half the time, they don't call you back for the appointment, and that goes across the board. You know, local mm -hmm. shelters, um, you know, rescues. Good luck in getting them to call you back. But um, so there, there's just my rant for the morning. Hopefully, it'll get better, but that's the way it is. Uh, all things will come in, in good timing, Todd, you know. There you go. That's the life. But hey, you know, make sure you do keep those shelters in mind and make sure they do need financial support to get through this. But hey, I guess it's a good problems of prosperity when everybody wants a dog, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, a few months ago, I actually rescued a couple of cats that were just dropped, uh, literally just dropped off right in front of my, my complex yeah. and um, found homes for the kittens and then took mama cat to a, a rescue. And I think they were going to take, send her to Northern states where they don't have these rescues. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's good. I and mean, you really appreciate what people are doing in those rescue organizations, but Hey yes. folks, get back to emails. <laughs> you know, it's a common courtesy to return an email these days, especially when somebody's trying to support your rescue. All right. Okay. So there's my rant for the day. But hey, tomorrow on the show, you're here for a couple of days, right? It's like Brittany redo, you know, when you used to co-host every day. I know. Yeah. We're, we're bringing those days back. <laughs> yeah. And we've got tomorrow a couple of, uh, we're back with uh, more AAPI celebration with uh, Flippin' Patties. That's a local restaurant. Um, we're going to be honoring Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. May sound like a burger joint, but wait, they're way much more than that. We'll learn about, all about them. Burgers in Filipino food. I've always wanted to check this place out, so that'll be good. That'll be very exciting. And we're going to be joined by Doc on the Run, Chris Segler uh, from the West Coast. He'll be joining us uh, as our regular fitness guest to talk about three simple balance and strength training exercises anyone can do uh, yep. to make you stronger and less injury prone um, if you're a hiker or a runner specifically. So um, this is going to be interesting to uh, participate in. 
Yeah, and I've had some pains and aches over the past couple of weeks from running, so I'm going to ask him about that tomorrow and get some free medical advice while we're on the air. Okay, all right. Uh, Make sure you're back again tomorrow. Brittany will be here. She's here tomorrow and the next day. Frank's going to return later in the week, but we both will be here tomorrow, 10 a.m. live for Up to the Minute. We'll see you then.